Welcome to In The Cart, sponsored by MB Golf Carts and Club Car. I'm here today with Heath Lee, and he's a treasurer at Akron Golf Course in Akron, Iowa. Thanks for joining me today, Lee. Yeah, thanks for having me. Glad, Mr. Lee. Uh, glad to be here. <laughs> yeah, so you've been the treasurer here for how long now? I've been uh, the treasurer of the golf board here at the Akron Golf Club for five years now. Um, so pretty much at a the first year I lived here, I wasn't on the board, but ever since, I'm basically stuck here, they said. <laughs> <laughs> well, you work at People's Bank yep, People's here Bank in here. town, so yep. it's a natural fit for you to be the treasurer, I think. And That was the idea behind it. It works It works good, so I yeah. shouldn't complain. Maybe you'll get some business out of it, too. Well, yeah. Possibly, yeah, right? Yep. <laughs> so before we take off down hole number one here, we want to talk about the clubhouse. Just newly remodeled clubhouse, right? When was that done? Yep. Uh, so in the winter of 2020 into 2021, we remodeled the whole inside of our clubhouse. Um, it was built in 2001 or maybe 2000, early 2000s, mm -hmm. and it was in dire need of getting a remodel. So we completely gutted it, everything except the kitchen and uh, built a new bar, took all the carpet out, all the trim out, took the bathrooms apart, redid all the bathrooms, um, tile on the wall there, took the carpet out, polished the concrete, um, moved the dance floor in the event side, new lighting, uh, custom built bar, put a walk-in cooler, which was a godsend. Um, a new HVAC system in so we had that that was kind of the first project when I got on the board to do was put new uh, air conditioning in and then that just got the ball rolling and we got got uh, got the remodel done and there's a lot of donated time and labor and it's all donated I can't thank the guys that helped us do that uh, enough from the financial aspect of it that's so crucial to you and we were discussing that this isn't a city run course it is it's, it's privately owned um, by the members they own it and it's just become an asset for the city here and what kind of events do you have happening here you know we got golf tournaments all throughout the year um, our earliest one we try to do it in middle of April we have tournaments all the way to October pretty much um, big events we we'll host a lot of graduations it's graduation season now so we've been doing a lot of those um, which is good um, we got some weddings coming up this summer. Um, one of the weddings is actually going to be here on on site. Excellent. So, so that'll be a new thing. I don't think that'd be possible without the new patio. Um, and then uh, we always try to have a few events in the winter time, you know, just to keep things going. We have a chamber banquet. Um, try to do a New Year's Eve party and a Christmas party, and and it's open for that type of stuff. You know, you want to have a business party contact a board member we can get something figured out uh, date time yep. um, when you want to have it and all that sort of stuff yeah kudos to getting that done it's it's an amazing place we're gonna be on the patio later we'll have some uh, footage of the of the whole clubhouse you can look at later here but yeah. well done yeah it was a lot of work and we we got to get it opened up just in time for our dueling pianos event uh, during um, st. Patrick's Day weekend time frame yeah so that was everyone was very impressed with how it looked so it was very fun cool. yeah it was awesome so we love to have it it's and i like bringing my friends from nebraska to show it off and they're like oh, i've never seen a nine hole course with this nice of a clubhouse so there aren't very many that do <laughs> so yeah it is right. a huge <laughs> asset to have and yes post round mid round or not even golfing it's a great place to come out yeah here, so. and you know that's a big thing we're trying to promote a lot this year too you know we're open for lunch and supper every day. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna start doing a happy hour. We got some new specialty drinks up here. So uh, that'll be something to be looking forward to on that end. Excellent, looking forward to that when we golf our next round. Speaking of golf, let's head down hole number one here. Okay. We'll get a look at the course now. What is your handicap? What, what do you have again? Uh, my league handicap right now is a six. Six, so. six for nine. Yep. Yep. So we're talking 12 on 18. Which 12 on 18. Yeah. I'll I'll take it. I'm not gonna. Complain. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm. My goal this year is to. We have a Ryder Cup with Elk Point. My goal is to make that team. So you got to be under, probably under a six for sure on nine holes. Here you go. To be able to make it. So 
that's a, something to look forward to, yeah. right? Yep. So it looks like the course came through winter really well here. It's green, or this fairway looks very green. Yeah, it did. Uh, we had pretty much had at least four inches of snow on it the whole time. Um, there was a little bit of winter kill on some fairways, but even now it's it's hard to pick them out. So yeah, it came so, out pretty good. The whole one's kind of got it's kind of a straight shot. Some uh, bunkers protecting the the T or the, the hole. It's a downhill shot. Uh, like a lot of these nine hole courses in small towns, a lot of mature trees out here, so you can get in some tree trouble really easily if you don't hit the fairway. Yep. If you need any advice on hitting out of the trees, I'm your guy. <laughs> I could use some of that. You know what? I'm pretty crafty with my four hybrid or three hybrid. Yeah, just to just get a, lay it low. Yeah, just scream it out of there and <laughs> hopefully it'll hold up in the fairway somewhere. Exactly. So how, how would you describe this course in general uh, to somebody who hasn't played it before? Well, the distance isn't going to kill you. Uh, it's not a very long course. We're just under 3,000 yards, mm -hmm. I think, from the from the black tee boxes. Yeah. Um, but if you don't hit it straight and play out of the fairway, it will eat you up because, like you said, the mature trees. If you can't, if you're not good about playing out of the trees, good luck. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you're gonna so, have some interesting holes and, and interesting it, scores. Yeah. If you can, if you can hit it a long ways, you can cut some corners. You can take some trees out of the play. Yes. And, and on hole then, number two here is a perfect example. If you can, if the dog leg right. If you can get over the tree over the line. Corner, yeah, yep. you can. You can. You'll be playing from roughly 200 yards out on a par five. Yeah, you can be there in two. If not, lay it up short. You're fine. You're on. You're putting for a birdie. Totally right. Yeah, this is one I have actually hit through this uh, dog leg, and then you're in trouble there because there's trees again on that one. Yep. Yeah, if you hit through the corner and, and get over on the other side, it uh, turns a little. Uh, sketchy on that end of things too. So I played this course, another guy that's been out here with um, with members in different uh, tournaments, he always would tell us that when you're putting on the greens, that you're always gonna run towards the river. Is that is that a fact or is that just uh, urban legend? Well I would say it's I would lean way towards a fact more than it is fiction. Um, there's some holes that don't look like it's going to break that way, and it somehow does. <laughs> Even when you're reading it, that it's not going to do, you know. Yep. That's kind of what the I found out. The, the river's to the west on all of, of, of mm -hmm. the golf course, so you're sitting there. It's like, ah, oh, this thing, there's no way it breaks that way. <laughs> and if you play it, that it's not going to break that way, sure enough, and you'll be on the bottom side of the hole, and then you're making hopefully making a two putt right you're wishing for a two putt yeah so this hole i think has a natural spring in it is that what this is here? yeah hole number two and it's probably my favorite hole on the course okay um just because it you know it has the, the this stuff you typically see on a, a golf course it's got a water hazard yeah it's got trouble left it's got trouble right but yes um there is a natural spring here i want to say there's a couple springs that feed this it doesn't stop running in the winter time. The pond never freezes. Right. Um, so, and we've always had water trouble with it. And a couple years ago, we said, "Guys, we got to do something else besides fighting little mud holes around the green. Mm -hmm. Let's make a pond." So we did that. Um, there is cattails on the dog leg on the left. We would like to build that into another pond. So, sure. make it even more trouble if you end up. Uh, going through the dog leg and well, it makes be, it challenging, but it's also like a kind of a signature hole because it is right. an interesting layout right. of it. Yep. Well, I'd be anxious to see how that all plays out. There is the cattails over there. You're yeah, right. and we we, we, burned, we, we burned them off this spring so we could maybe do something with them later on this year. Okay. Um, it's just a matter of getting the, the equipment and time to do it, which is, you know, we got members that are, you know they got big earth moving equipment that help us out do stuff. And you know we couldn't have dug out that that pond without those yeah. guys. So, well, you have so, to pay to have it done, have right, a remodel done, and right. that's really expensive. Right. So, so let's talk about um, how many rounds are played out here. Do you know how many rounds are played out here? Typical, typical year now. I'd say you know if you want to count all the paid rounds, you know green fee players, and then throw on the the uh, membership rounds. 
I would be comfortable saying, you know, probably 4,000 rounds a year. Mm -hmm. It just, it depends on, you know, are they fair weather guys? Are they going to come out here and play when it's 45 degrees and they're itching because it's been a long winter and it's <laughs> March 31st, you know, we're going to do it. Yeah, we had a little later start this year, but I think once it got going this year, it just kind of took off. And yeah. There were some cooler, you know, wet days, but you know what? You still got to just get out there. Right. And hopefully your, your golf game is uh, adapted to that late start. But... Yeah, and you know, I was surprised with I've only played six times this year, including league, um, to be shooting in the, you know, low 40s. Shot a couple of times at 39. I said, oh, that's yeah. pretty good coming out of the winter time. And, yeah, that's and a slow start, too. So, absolutely. I mean, there's been times we, we can get out in March, you know, it's 70, right. degree, 70 degree day. Yeah. But, you know, that was not this year. But the, the grass, the turf just really sprung up green when it, that snow was finally gone. We had some warm days. Yep. And, you know, this, this fairway here had a little trouble with some winter kill, but, you know, it's pretty much fixed itself it's filling They're, in it's filling in nice so who is your groundskeeper um our groundskeeper is keegan bach um he's with us this is his second year okay um younger guy he's from uh the hinton and merrill area mm -hmm. so yeah younger guy i think he's my age i'm 30 so i think he's right there 29 30 years old great guy uh, he's well you need some a, young blood right he's done a fantastic job well, it looks great um what do you think? Uh, what's the, what, what do you think the speeds are of the greens right now? Or what kind of what do you what do you how do you characterize your greens? Well, uh, our green mower was down for a couple days. He got it going though, so usually they're pretty fast. Um, uh -huh. As far as like a stint meter goes, I don't know what he has them at, but they're usually rolling. It's good. They're they're not slow, but they're not so fast that you can't. You know, they're yeah, not keep it so, on. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Because so. there are so many courses we go to, small town courses. Not, not stereotyping or anything, but they are small greens, you know, and they gotta gotta run them a little slower. But I'd say your greens aren't the signature, just like postage stamp, you know, round. You have some more character. Yeah, contour. I got some contour and some character to them. You know, our our. Uh, Hole number two, for example, you know, it's narrow at the front, gets real wide on the back, yep. and it slopes hard right if you're looking at it from the fairway. Um, you know, a lot of these holes, you know, for this one, for example, number four, I mean, it's a big oval shape, I would say. Yep. Um, it's got some low spots, it's got some high spots. Yep. Um, it's kind of got a, a backstop on it. It's out got there a backstop. At it. Yep. So, yeah, so that's what's that's what you're saying. Like it plays like a like a bigger city course, you could say. Maybe, right, right, right. Yep. yep. I know one thing we did last fall though too is we rebuilt our par three tee boxes. Okay. Um, and laid sod on them. We okay. haven't played them yet. Yep. Um, so we're just waiting for them to uh, to get going good, get a good start, and yeah, then uh, you'll cut them. Then. Cut them, and we're slowly yep. working that way towards them. So. Well, there's always a little bit of a process there, right? And you're, yeah. You're redoing things, and you got to play in front of the box, then. right? Play but in front really or behind. Good. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It'll be. You know, we, we struggled to keep them alive a lot, and we added you know some depth to them, yep. just because the tree roots were swallowing up a lot of the water that they were getting. So. I can believe that. So yeah, that was uh, that was nice to uh, be able to do that. So this green is is a tough one too. I think I. It's kind of a tough green to hit, I think, from the box. It is. There's trees kind of it tuckered is. in. Uh, in my opinion, it is the hardest tee or hardest green to hit uh, okay. on the golf course in regulation. In my opinion, um, yep. I could count on one hand, and I've played this course a thousand times. <laughs> how many times I've landed on the green off a tee box? Uh, yeah, I've been over here. I've been over there. Yep. Yeah, most of mine go right. So yeah. I've been close. I don't know if I've ever actually been on it. Well, yeah. So yeah, it's it's a tough one to hit, and it is all you know pretty much uphill from the tee box, the yeah. green slopes. But yeah. so yeah, it's always a challenge. If you get it close, you should go be time. all right. Yeah, it's go time. So so here is my probably my favorite hole out here. We were talking about it on the trip here on the right here, but 
this is hole number nine, and it looks pretty, you know, easy from the start here, but the green on this, the green complex is it's elevated really high and it really just slopes a lot. You, um, I think rounds can can die here. They can. Uh, if you're shooting tournaments a good can round, die and yep. live and die here, right? They, they can. They can. And, you know, it's a 377 yard par four, so it doesn't seem that long. Um, but yeah, just like the rest of the course, you got trees lining the fairway, you got houses on the left. So that may, may, may make some guys be a little intimidated. <laughs> Maybe they might be playing out of sevens fairway, but yeah, it, if you can get it up there towards the green, it is very challenging. Very challenging to, to to get it up there and to stay on the green too. So. That's the thing. I remember a time I was leading by two strokes in our little nine-hole tournament we do, and on uh, this hole I came in two strokes up, and my second shot was at the top of the green complex. I was like, Ugh, I don't like this, and it ended up losing the lead on that hole. I lost I lost the match because it I went past the hole and two or three putt back. I don't even know what it took anymore. I, I kind of want to wipe it from my brain. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> birdied it a couple times. Have you? The first time I ever birdied it was the first year I was playing league here, so five years ago. Okay. And I was playing with a, a, an older guy, Keith Swanson. So we're the Keith and Heath team. <laughs> yeah, and sure. I chipped it in for birdie from about 30 yards, and I couldn't believe it. And it was during league, and was like, See, well, that's, that's, what it never, takes. that's never going to happen again. <laughs> But yeah, it's always fun. As we're pulling up here, you can get a good view of the clubhouse. Uh, there's some really cool houses on the left side of the green, too, that are really kind of a stand out. Um, I don't know who lives over here, but this I always yeah, admire the yard. Yeah, gals getting practiced up for league in a couple weeks. There you go. Get, get their get their time out, their, their night out, too, right? Yep, they do. <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. Well, Heath, I want to thank you for taking a little bit of time to oh, show yeah. me off on the yeah. course here. It's really a, an honor to be out here to be able to do this and talk about these small town courses. Talk about any of the courses that we golf a lot. Um, appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it, and I'm glad you guys came out today. And yeah, I like you know I take a lot of pride in the golf course. I'm not from here. And people always ask me why do you care so much about it. Well. And I spent a lot of time and a lot of effort to, to make it nice and a nice place for people to come. So that's why I care. So excellent. See you in the next one. <laughs>